Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Your Time to Shine, a radio show designed to help you explore your own divine gifts. Good evening. Thank you for being here with me this evening, and I hope today finds you doing well and hope you are navigating all of the crazy energy that we've got going on right now. Um, We just had a full moon. We're getting ready to go into eclipse season. And wow, I tell you, uh, the energy for me has been vibrating high. I've had days where I'm like, oh my gosh, I just want to pull the covers over my head and go back to bed. And then the next day, it's a lot easier and smoother. And so it's been a little bit up and down. And so hopefully you guys have all been navigating that well. And you're giving yourself a little bit of a break because when we have such intense energy, um, we have a tendency to be really hard on ourselves Um, and take things um, as our own. So be gentle with yourselves out there, and we will get through this. So I've had, interestingly enough, a couple of work events um, over the last couple of weeks, and they've been big events, bringing people together. And it's been really amazing to see people back out and mingling and doing things together. And everybody is just like little kids in a candy store. They are so excited to be out. They're so excited to see peers and friends and coworkers and the like. And so it's been, you know, really great to see everybody out and about and getting back to what feels like, oh, maybe a little bit of normalcy, Um, and hopefully this will last. Hopefully we are kind of rounding the corner of all of of this, where we can um, be together once more and be in larger groups and around friends and family, because it feels really good to be able to do that. Now, Speaking of getting out and about and mingling and talking with people, um, you know, speaking and communicating, it's all about um, the throat chakra. And so a lot of times, if our throat chakra is locked, we can get things such as sore throats, um, you know, strep throat, It could even lead into um, sinus infections. And um, so with this, it's kind of interesting because tonight I decided to pick a card for everybody. And I I picked the fifth chakra and it's um, Archangel Michael and uh, Gabrielle. Or sorry, it's Archangel Gabrielle, not Michael. Sorry, I read that wrong. And so it's talking about the throat chakra. And it's really interesting about, you know, using communication and having communication, um, you know, being the primary source of how, how we, you know, communicate with others. And so making sure that we are saying things Um, that we need to say, saying things with integrity and saying things out of unconditional love and making sure that what comes out is pure and is loving. And so keeping that throat chakra really open and vibrant, you know, a lot of times you can open up your throat chakra by singing, right? Um, Or just having that heart to heart communication. So if you find yourself, you know, having a frog in your throat, having a little bit of congestion or a sore throat, you need to stop and think about what it is that you're not communicating that you really do need to communicate and then draw that out and clear up that throat chakra, right? You can hum, you can talk, you can sing, um, you can even journal, right? You can even journal about some of the things um, that you might be going through just to help energetically clear that throat chakra for you. And then, of course, bring in your angels and guides to ask them 
for help and to clearing out that chakra so that you can have clear, easy communication and flowing communication. So when, when you have all of that, it's so much easier to talk with people and to be open. And it's a form of expression. And don't forget to talk to yourself and talk nice to yourself because we ourselves are people too. And so show the same courtesy to yourself that you would show others. So by using your voice and talking kind to yourself is going to help also open up that throat chakra and make it um, loving and open and flowing. So I thought that was really interesting that I was talking about um, getting out and about and then the whole thing with communication. And that's really what these outings were about, right? It's all about communication and having communion with one another. So as you get back out there in the world and start having more face-to-face conversations with people, be aware of what you're speaking and what you're saying and making sure that it's with integrity and unconditional love. All right. Perfect. We are going to go to the phone lines. We have a caller ready to go. We have Amy in Texas. Good evening, Amy, and hi, welcome hi. to your time to shine. Thank you. How are you this evening? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. What can I do for you this evening? Um, I need a love reading. If you can tell me if I'll ever meet my soulmate. And if you could tell me who it was, that would be awesome, too. <laughs> uh, you, you mean who is coming into your life? Yes. Okay. Um, let me check in here really quick, Amy, and see what um, your guides and your angels have to say. And um, as I tune in, there's just going to be a little moment of silence, and then I will be right back with you. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Amy, Um, it was interesting as I was chatting with you and you were talking, my screen was flickering. (laughs) So I knew that your guides and your loved ones were already here um, anxiously awaiting to talk with you. Um, What they're they're showing me is, um, yes, to answer your question in in a very short answer, um, yes. There are a couple of people actually out there for you. So there isn't just like one that fits all kind of person. Um, They're showing, they're showing me that, um, have you been kind of pushing people away? Like maybe you're not quite ready for that relationship you're you're starting to open up to it a little bit more but there seems to be like this wall or um i i don't know if it's you're not ready or you're you know what that is but they're kind of showing me this a little bit of this wall um that's not allowing people to get very close to you um So I don't know if you've had a bad relationship or two that is making you a little bit weary. Oh, yes, definitely. My boyfriend just cheated on me. Okay. Okay. So that's why the wall, right? Um, Right. So, yeah. So they're showing me that you need need to take a little bit of time um, to be able to kind of heal from this and, and come back. And and to really be okay with who you are, um, because they're showing me that that his actions are not a reflection of you. And so 
to not take that on. Don't take that responsibility on like you've done something wrong or um, because I feel like there's a little piece of that where you feel like you're blaming, almost blaming yourself a little yeah. bit for what yeah. happened. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're showing me that this isn't, this isn't because you've done something or you didn't do something. And so it's a, this time right now is about you building the relationship with you because you yeah. need to be solid about who you are and about where you stand in life. And once you do that, that wall will come down because you will be comfortable and confident in who you are. And then that will allow the per that right person to come into your life. Any idea they're when that's going to be? Well, I was just going to say, they're saying don't rush that. Um, they're saying that you kind of rushed another relationship and mm -hmm. you didn't give yourself time to kind of heal from that one. So they're saying take this time to, you know, to go through those motions and to yeah. release the sadness, the anger, you know, whatever emotion, um, whatever emotions you're feeling to be able to get through to the, get through those. Um, yeah. It's timelines. It's a little hard to say um, because if you really focus on you and who you are and getting through this, um, you know, this could be six months, nine months, a year, right? Um, yeah. So they're just, they're encouraging you to really take this time for you. And yeah, because if you don't, that wall is going to be up and you're going to attract the same kind of thing. It's almost like you haven't really learned what you've needed to learn about this relationship um, and you haven't grieved it, you haven't let go of it. So it's just gonna keep coming back in, coming back in, right? Um, right, because well, it, it definitely... just happened like two weeks ago. Yeah. So it's still fairly new. Right. So there's a lot of emotion and a lot of things that you need to kind of process around this whole piece. Um, before you can bring in the right person. Okay. Sounds but good. But definitely, um, that you know, there's like I said, there's a couple people out there that are right for you, right? Um, they're encouraging you through this process to maybe you know to help you heal, to maybe write a letter not to give to him, not to do anything with, but it's like a healing a piece of it. Like write everything out, like what you're angry about, what makes you frustrated about this situation, right? Um, the good, the bad, the ugly, right? And write it all down. And then do a ceremonial burn where you basically you write everything down and then you say a little prayer over it and you say, thank you, angels, for helping me write this and get this all out. And then have a ceremonial burn where you put the paper, you can be in your fireplace, it can be in a, in a bowl or some type of, um, you know, fireproof kind of um, uh, cup or, or right. whatever that is. Um, and then light it and then watch it burn completely all the way down until there's nothing left, okay? Cool. So that's one really good way. The second thing to do would be after you do that and you cleanse that and you kind of work, start working through those emotions, then write down what is, what is the, I'm not gonna say perfect because I don't think there's ever really a perfect person. No. But what is not. the closest thing to a perfect person that you would like to have in your life, right? That could be someone who makes you laugh. Um, 
someone who's loving and caring and has kind words to say, right? Start putting that down. So then that sends that message out to the universe. Because when you get excited about those things about a person, it sends out this high vibration out to the universe that says, okay, help me find this person, right? And then that brings that person right. closer to you. Awesome. Yeah. That sounds great. I will do that tonight. And Good. write a letter to him and then maybe in a couple of weeks, then I'll write down what I want the most in a partner. Right. It's, you know, it's really important, um, you know, to do that, to write all the things that are important to you, right, that have special meaning to you. And, um, you know, don't get like, you know, too specific, specific, like, you know, I want a guy who's got blonde, you know, blue eyes and dark brown hair and, you know, don't six foot two. (laughs) Don't get that specific. Try to feel the energy and the emotions behind what it is you're asking for. Not good with kids. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Because I have two kids. So. Yep. Exactly. Well, perfect, Amy. Have I answered all your questions this evening? Yes, ma'am. You have. And yeah. it really helped me because I thought maybe it was somehow my fault. And it's good to know that it's not. No. It's not. Well, fantastic, Amy. Thank you so much for calling in. And um, I hope that you have a great evening and best of luck. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, Next, we have Kaylin in New York. Kaylin, how are you this evening? Welcome to your time to shine. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Um, I'm doing okay. It's late where you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you this evening? Um. So, if you had insight um on this particular situation, um, I was in a relationship for five years with somebody that um, I thought was, you know, re- a, a good person. I genuinely thought that. And then um, recently he treated me really, really, really terribly. We ended up breaking up. Um, I was devastated for a while. And actually just yesterday he contacted me saying that he didn't want to get back together, but he wanted to go for drinks, and um, I don't know. I just wanted to see if he was just lying about the fact that he didn't want to get back together with me, or if he just contacted me to hurt me, or is he just an evil person? All right. Uh, Let me take a a minute here to kind of tune in to see. I'm already kind of getting some some messages here, but let me just sit with this for just a second here. Um, There's going to be a little moment of silence and I'll get right back to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, Kaylin. So, uh, no, he's he's not evil. Um, he's going through a lot of things. He's going through um, some deep 
um, inner working changes and he doesn't he doesn't really know how to explain it. He doesn't really know what it is that he's going through. Um, he's he's just going through some kind of like an awakening or an opening up and it's kind of changing his his life and his direction a little bit. And sometimes when that happens, um, if somebody can't explain something about that, they, they don't, they kind of react. They don't know exactly what to do with that. And I'm being shown that that's, that's kind of the situation here that, you know, he, he's not a bad person. Um, he's reacting to something that he doesn't know what to do with. And he's he's kind of going back and forth a little bit. He's struggling a little bit of whether he wants to get back together or he doesn't want to get back together. He's just, he's very wobbly. Um, and so, you know, I would be cautious about, you know, wanting to get back together with this person because he's got some things he needs to to sort out and to work out. And he's going to need a little bit of time with that, I think. Um, they're not really showing me. It's like really fuzzy or hazy as far as whether you guys would ever get back together. Um, it leans a little bit more towards no. You probably won't get back together again. Um mm -hmm. So what they're what they're saying is as far as like getting together with him for drinks, it might not be the best interest for you um, because of the place and space that you're in right now. Right. I think it might be a little too hard for you to be able to be platonic and just have this casual conversation with this person right now, um, because I feel like your heart and soul was really invested in this relationship. And this kind of came out of the blue. And so, yeah, I mean, he, he, well, he recently, he, I don't know if he tried to hurt me or not, but, um, a lot of the problems that we had that led to the breakup, um, one of them was he would ignore me and just stay on his phone all day, every day, um, right next to me. And right. he made a dating profile um and <laughs> in the profile it stated that he would give his partner all the attention and like he flipped everything that I was asking him to change and is now promising that to these strangers on dating profiles and right. he liked my best friend's dating profile and right. I don't know I just feel like He's trying to hurt he's, me or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he's trying to intentionally hurt you. Like I said, he's going through, he's going through a shift and a change in his life. And so mm -hmm. it may not fit the relationship that you guys once had, right? It may not be that yeah. you fit him, right? And that's not because you're not a good person. You're not right for him. You know somebody else it's just that this relationship is moving in a different direction and so i would i i would highly recommend that you you know not get entangled in that again um and let him go and do what he needs to do okay um so i i just think that would be your in your best and highest you know, to kind of take a step back from that. Yeah, yeah, no, I um, I ended up telling him not to contact me again because, um, I don't know, I'm sure he knew I was still hurt. Right. Kaylin, I hate to interrupt you, but we're coming down to the last few seconds of our show. Um, so I want to say thank you so much for calling in. I want to say good night to everybody. You can reach me on my Facebook page at www, or excuse me, my <laughs> my website, www.wingsofsoulswithjulie.com and my Facebook pages, 
Julie Yeager Walker Medium, and your time to shine. Good night, everybody.